Hello, everybody. This is Brother Luke, Sin City Preacher. Uh, welcome to this episode of Bible Talk with Brother Luke. Uh, tonight, I'm continuing in the study of the book of Proverbs. In fact, tonight, I'm concluding the study. This, I guess, is the grand finale. I checked the uh, dates on these videos, and I guess it's been about 10 months since I started Proverbs chapter 1. So it, it's been quite a long time uh, looking at Proverbs. And, of course, I am doing studies on uh, a variety of different books and, and subjects at, at the same time. So uh, it's taken a while to get through it, but uh, uh, tonight is chapter 31. And I'm going to complete chapter 31 tonight. Uh, now, I'm a KJV firstist. So I read it first in the KJV, and then I sometimes look at it in the Amplified Translation. Uh, sometimes I find that to be helpful. Uh, now, if you did not see all the previous studies on Proverbs, uh, they are available on my YouTube channel, Sin City Preacher. I hope you will go back and watch this from the beginning. All right. Proverbs chapter 31, verse 1. <clears throat> The words of King Lemuel, the prophecy that his mother taught him. Well, first of all, the King Lemuel, um, there's a footnote, and it says the identity of King Lemuel is uncertain. However, ancient Jewish tradition connects Lemuel with Solomon. Now, I don't know what that means, if they think it's another name for Solomon or if it's just he's connected somehow as a uh, an associate of him, someone who is a contemporary I don't know. Uh, I think that this is a different king. It's not King Solomon. So we see in chapter um, 30, it was not written by King Solomon, and now chapter 31. Uh, the first 29 chapters, though, of course, they were written by King Solomon. So it says, What, my son, and what the son of my womb, and what the son of my vows? Um so let us read that beginning in the Amplified. It says, the words of King Lemuel, the oracle, which his mother taught him, what, O my son, and what, O son of my womb, and what shall I advise you, O son of my vows? Uh, Verse 3 in the KJV says, Give not thy strength unto women, nor thy ways to that which destroyeth kings. Give not thy strength unto women. I think that's just talking about don't be preoccupied with spending your old time and your time pursuing sexual pleasures with women. Your time, in fact, I, I remember my father, uh, he's deceased now, but... Uh, I'm 65, so this goes back probably around almost 60 years ago. I was probably 10 or 12 years old when my father decided to explain the birds and the bees to me, and he certainly didn't go into any kind of graphic details. He left me uh, wondering a lot, but he did tell me this basically what King Solomon or King uh, Lemuel is saying here. Don't get preoccupied with women and sexual pleasures. It, it can really take up a lot of your time and uh, your time is better spent doing other things. Try to redact, redirect that sex drive into something else. Uh, that was my father's advice. I didn't find it very easy to follow it. I found that uh, most of my life uh, has uh, the sex drive and that pursuit has uh, really taken quite control over, over my life. And uh, it's so I certainly understand if you're a young man, uh, an adolescent or a young man, and, and uh, I, I, I can identify. I've gone through the same kind of struggles. But I do think that this advice from King Lemuel and from my own father, uh, it, it certainly is wise, wise advice. Uh, we, when we think of all the time that we, we spent chasing it, this sexual gratification, that uh, our life would be better off if we could redirect it into something more constructive. It says in 
Uh, verse 3 in the Amplified says, Do not give your generative strength to women, neither foreign wives in marriages or allegiances, nor concubines, nor your ways to that which destroy kings. Verse 4 in the KJV says, It is not for kings, O Lemuel, it is not for kings to drink wine, nor for princes strong drink. <clears throat> so kings can do it, obviously, but it's not advisable. You need you need a sound mind to uh, to be a king to uh, rule. Uh, that you have a great responsibility to the kingdom and the people, and so you should be sober. Verse five says, "Lest they drink and forget the law and pervert the judgment of any of the afflicted." Give strong drink unto him that is ready to perish, and wine unto those that be of heavy hearts. <clears throat> so if someone is sick, very sick, and you want to ease their pain, uh, or if someone is has a grievous heart and they need wine, alcoholic beverage to kind of escape reality, uh, then there is, there is a use for it. Even uh, uh, Paul recommended it to Timothy to, uh, as a medicine. Uh, wine as a medicine to ail his uh, stomach problems. Let's look at verse 6 in the Amplified. It says, Give strong drink as medicine to him who is ready to pass away, and wine to him whose life is bitter. So there is an appropriate use for it. And even just relaxing with an alcoholic beverage as a form of relaxation, now doctors are basically saying, if you do have a glass of wine a day or two uh, as a routine, it's probably actually good for your health. But when we go too far with it and it takes over our lives and we become unproductive and it ruins our livers, then you've gone too far with it. Uh, and it says in verse 7 in the KGV, let him drink and forget his poverty and remember his misery no more. So, but sometimes, I mean, I guess if a person is uh, temporarily needs to forget things, it's just an escape from reality. But you, if you drink and just to forget your poverty, then you're not going to get out of poverty. You need to be sober and make a plan and be diligent to overcome this poverty. Uh, verse 7 in the Amplified says, Let him drink and for forget his poverty and no longer remember his trouble. So poverty could be trouble of various times. Maybe you're not lacking money, but you're lacking something. Uh, friendships, relationships, happiness. You could be poor in, in that respect. Verse 8 in the KJV says, Open thy mouth for the dumb in the cause of all such as are appointed to destruction. Hmm. That seems like a... I didn't follow that thought at all. Let me read again. Open thy mouth, judge righteously... I'm sorry, that was verse 9. Uh, verse 8 is, Open thy mouth for the dumb in the cause of all such as are appointed to destruction. And maybe you can understand that, but I can't. Let's go look at it in the Amplified. Open your mouth for the mute, for the person who is not able to speak, for the rights of all who are unfortunate and defenseless. Okay, so if, if stick up for other people. If they're not able to speak, either... They can't speak because they're mute or because they just don't have confidence. They don't have a platform. If you have the ability to speak for other people and come to their defense. Verse 9 in the KJV, open thy mouth, judge righteously, and plead the cause of the poor and needy. So that is uh, it's just saying, let's let's stick up for them. Let's, let's take up a worthy cause. Uh, I, I started a charity many, many years ago titled a worthy cause. And so we, we should take on these worthy causes and uh, come to the, the aid of the needy and the poor. Uh, now we get to verse 9, and it goes into a totally different subject, which is really a kind of a very important part of the scriptures, these remaining verses. It says, open, uh, and verse 10, who can find a virtuous woman? For her price is far above rubies. So, in other words, if you have a virtuous woman, a wife, uh, it's worth more than rubies. But it, but who can find a virtuous woman? So that's telling us that it's kind of rare. And if you do have a virtuous woman, a wife, 
then you should treasure it. Verse 10 in the Amplified says, an excellent woman, one who is spiritual, capable, intelligent, and virtuous, who is he who can find her? Her value is more precious than jewels and her worth is far above rubies and pearls. Do you have a virtuous wife? Consider yourself blessed. Uh, 11, KJV says, the heart of her husband doth safely trust in her so that he shall have no need of spoil. A spoil. Well, let's see what the Amplified says. The heart of her husband trusts in her with secure confidence. So we trust this virtuous wife and he will have no lack of gain. Verse 12, KJV says, she will do him good and not evil all the days of her life. If you've got a wife that, that is like this, you certainly count your blessings. She de seeketh wool and flax and worketh willingly with her hands. So this particular woman is an and giving you an example. This woman does uh, skillful work with her hands. She is like the merchant ship. She bringeth her food from afar. So she's a business person. She riseth also, also while it is yet night and giveth meat to her household and a portion to her maidens. I mean, this, this woman is doing it all. She's, she's doing the, her, the, uh, the, 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 the work of a wife to feed the family, to prepare the meals. And she's a business person and she works with her hands. This is, sounds to me like a superwoman, kind of like my wife. She considereth a field and buyeth it. With the fruit of her hands, she planteth a vineyard. She's, she's an, an investor. She girdeth her loins with strength and strengtheneth her arms. So she's physically strong. She's, not a, she's able to do hard physical work. She perceiveth that her merchandise is good. Her candle goeth not out by night. In other words, she's even working into the wee hours of the night. She layeth her hands to the spindle and her hands hold the distaff. I don't know what the distaff is. Verse 19 in the Amplified says, she stretches out her hands to the distaff and her hands hold the spindle uh, as she spins wool into thread for clothing. There's a footnote here for distaff. Let's see what it says. Verse E, E says, the staff that holds the textile fibers for spinning. Okay, so the staff that you spin wool on. Um, let me read all these verses here in the Amplified, uh, starting with verse 10. It says, uh, an excellent woman, one who is spiritual, capable, intelligent, and virtuous, who is he who can, who can find her? Her value is more precious than jewels, and her worth is far above rubies or pearls. <clears throat> the heart of her husband trusts in her with secure confidence, and he will have no lack of gain. She comforts, encourages, and does him only good and not evil all the days of her life. She looks for wool and flax and works with willing hands in delight. She is like the merchant ships, abounding with treasure, she brings her household's food from far away. She rises also while it is still night and gives food to her household and assigns tasks to her maids. She considers a field before she buys and accepts it, expanding her business prudently. With her profits, she plants fruitful vines in her vineyard. She equips herself with strength, that's spiritual, mental, and physical fitness for her God-given task and makes her arms strong. Uh, she sees that her gain is good. Her lamp does not go out, but it burns continually through the night. She is prepared for whatever lies ahead. She stretches out her hand to the distaff, and her hand hold, hands hold the spindle as she spins wool into thread for clothing. Are you impressed? Who wouldn't be? Who wouldn't be impressed with this woman? This is an awful lot to live up to for any woman, for any, any person, anybody who has this kind of virtue and work ethic and talent. 
and intelligence. She has everything. So if this, does this woman really exist who does can do that much? Yes, there are some women, but this is a super woman. Verse, uh, verse 20 in the KJV. She stretches out her hand to the poor. Yea, she reacheth forth her hands to the needy. She is not afraid of the snow for her household, for her household, for all her household are clothed with scarlet. She is not afraid of the snow for her household. For her household are clothed with scarlet. I don't understand. Let me see verse 21 in the Amplified. She does not fear the snow for her household. For in all her household are clothed in expensive scarlet wool. So even if it's cold, her household is taken care of. They have the proper clothing. Verse 22 in the KJV says, She maketh herself coverings of tapestry. Her clothing is silk and purple. Her husband is known in the gates when he sitteth among the elders of the land. <clears throat> So she's got a husband that's also very successful and respected. She maketh fine linen and selleth it and delivereth girdles of, unto the merchant. Strength and honor are her clothing, and she shall rejoice in time to come. She openeth her mouth with wisdom, and in her tongue is the law of kindness. She looketh well to the ways of her household, and eateth not the bread of idleness. She's not lazy. She's diligent, constantly, constantly working and um, and being productive. Her children arise up and call her blessed. Her husband also, and he praiseth her. Who wouldn't? I, I feel this way about my wife, actually. I, my wife, Cindy, is, she's all of this. She's, she's just so wonderful. Uh, I, I, and I... I, I I hope, my hope for you is that you have a wife like this in chapter 31. What a wonderful blessing. We could flip this around also and say to the wives, uh, let's hope that you're blessed with a husband with such virtue. Um, verse 28, her, uh, no, verse 29, many daughters have done virtuously, but thou ex excellest them all. She excels above all the other women. Verse 30, I'm taught, this is a superwoman. Verse 30, favor is deceitful and beauty is vain, but a woman that feareth the Lord, she shall be praised. There's a beautiful song I've heard sung with this, with this uh, verse here. Um, verse 31 of chapter 31. Give her of the fruit of her hands and let her own works praise her in the gates. So I'll read that in the Amplified. Uh, verse 30 and 31. Charm and grace are deceptive and superficial, but uh, and superficial beauty is vain. Superficial. Nothing wrong with being physically beautiful. But if you have superficial beauty, it's just vanity, it's meaningless. Uh, but a woman who fears the Lord, who reverently worshiping and obeying and serving and trusting him with awe-filled respect, she shall be praised. Give her of the product of her hands and let her own works praise her in the gates of the city. So here we have... A description of a woman, a wife, who is ideal in every every way. Not everybody lives up to this standard. Uh, hopefully, this woman is able to do all this and and not be all stressed out from just from from just pursuing success in in every part of life, because this woman is obviously successful in every way, and if a person is diligently trying to do that. Sometimes uh, they could be really stressed out because they're putting so much pressure on themselves to succeed. But there's no reference to that problem with this woman. So she certainly is wonderful. 
and and I, as I said, uh, if if you know a woman like this, she's to be praised. If you have a wife like that, she's to be loved and respected and revered. Well, that concludes the study of the book of Proverbs, 31 chapters. And many people uh, do this religiously or as a routine. They will read one chapter of Proverbs a day for 31 days, and then they start again. So they read Proverbs over and over again throughout their lives and get these principles uh, just so much part of them that and they adopt it into their lives and because they uh, are wise we see one thing we learn from this study is that you have three levels knowledge understanding and wisdom knowledge is like okay uh, do you know what john three sixteen says oh certainly i can quote that for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Okay, that's knowledge. But do you understand the meaning of the verse? See, that's that's even greater than knowledge, is understanding. Can you explain to me the meaning of that verse? Uh, and then even greater than understanding is applying it. That's wisdom. If you apply it to your life, is in that particular verse is saying, believe in Jesus and you'll have everlasting life. So will you be wise enough to do it? Do what John 3, 16 says, believe in Jesus, receive the gift of eternal life. So one of the things we learn from the book of Proverbs is all of these principles that we should adopt or adapt into our lives. And when we do, uh, we are wise. And through wisdom, we get success in all parts of our lives. So I hope you will go back and watch this from the beginning and perhaps take on the, the uh, challenge of reading a chapter of Proverbs every day for 31 days and then the next month repeat. Um, so now the last thing I want to say is I, I end every one of my studies with the same message and that's the gospel message. The gospel is a Greek word. It means good news. And I have good news for you indeed. This is the best news ever. And that is that if you want to go to heaven, if you want to have eternal life in heaven after you die, the good news is Jesus wants you to have it. Jesus is offering you eternal life in heaven as a free gift. Not just to you, but to everyone. No exceptions. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord Jesus shall be saved. Whosoever means any person without exception. If you're watching this now, you can receive eternal life in heaven as a free gift from Jesus right now. If you want it, you just have to receive it in faith. Believe that Jesus alone has the power, the ability to give you eternal life in heaven. And, and then believe that he will do it because he promises you eternal life if you will trust him problem is most people in the world are trying to get to heaven some other way there's a hundred other ways but they really boil down to one way and that is belief in your own ability having faith in yourself thinking that i can get to heaven on my own I, if i just am good enough is that what you believe the bible says that's a lie from the devil the bible says that's maybe man's way but it's impossible to achieve heaven that way. That's not God's way. God's way is trust Jesus. Reject the idea that there's any other way to get to heaven. Reject the idea that you can get to heaven through your own righteousness, through self-righteousness, through your own goodness. Reject it. And then call on the name of the Lord and say, Jesus, I understand it's impossible to get there on my own. I need you to do it for me. Believe in him. Who is he? Jesus is eternal God Almighty. Jesus came down from heaven and became a man, the Son of God, the Savior. He died on a cross and paid for all of our sins. The sins are paid for. Hallelujah. Jump for joy. And then 
he was buried. And on the third day, he raised himself back to life to prove his claims were true. To prove he's God and Savior, and he has power over life and death. I watched a movie today called, the title is Risen. I recommend it highly. It talks about the resurrection. And the resurrection is the sign that Jesus gave us, the proof that his claims are true. The resurrection is the reason we have confidence that our faith in Jesus is justified. All right, thank you for watching. And I hope you will join me nightly for these live broadcasts, 7 p.m. Pacific time, uh, for more episodes of Bible Talk with Brother Luke. Now that I've concluded this study on the book of Proverbs, uh, I'll probably come up with a new book of the Bible or a new topic to replace it. But right now I'm currently doing studies on the book of John, the book of Ecclesiastes, and the theological topic, uh, What is the State of the Dead? Join me nightly, 7 p.m. Pacific time. Bless you in the name of our great Savior God, Jesus Christ.